Good day, students, and welcome back to another edition of Learning Math with Walker. I'm in a good mood. I don't know if y'all can tell. I just ate a blueberry muffin, and I am feeling awesome. Today, we are going to talk about integer multiplication and division. Now, you will notice there is nothing set up on this page because you should have received a graphic organizer to fill in um, that we are going to tape into our notebook at the end of this video. If you did not receive this graphic organizer, I am going to kind of have you pause the video right here. Um, let me zoom it in a little bit, little bit. Um, if you can get this copied into your notebook, only if you don't have the graphic organizer. If you have this graphic organizer, there is no need to copy anything down in your notebook. If you do not have it, go ahead and copy it into your notebook. Take a pause. Okay, so today we're gonna happens what, uh, to, what? Ah, words are hard. Today, we're going to talk about what happens when we multiply and divide positive and negative numbers. And you may be thinking, I don't think we've learned subtraction yet. We just learned addition. Shouldn't we learn subtraction? I like to say subtraction for last because it's complicated. And let's just do it last because it's kind of hard and like low key isn't very fun. Okay. So in this video, let's talk about what happens when we multiply and divide because it is much quicker and much more easier to understand. So we are gonna fill out this graphic organizer and then tape it into our notebook. So first things first, we can represent multiplication in a variety of different ways. There are three main ways that we represent it. So the first is with the symbol X. So like two times three, another is with a dot that looks like a decimal, but we put it in between the two numbers. So example, two times three. And another way what, uh, that we can multiply is we can use parentheses. So if I do two and then a three in parentheses right next to it, that means multiplication. Please, for the sake of anything that you care about, please only use the dot in parentheses in our class. We're gonna start using X in pre-algebra and algebra things, and it's gonna be real confusing if you use X as a variable and if you use X as multiplication. So please, 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 please try to use only one of these two symbols. You can also use the asterisk. So an alternative to the X, if you like to use the X is to use like an asterisk. I have a hard time with that word, but it looks kind of like a little star. Um, you can use that symbol as well to represent multiplication, okay? Um, <clears throat> so please, please, please try to use those two symbols for multiplication. We can represent division in a few ways. The first way is with the division sign, classic. Another way is we can use the fraction bar to represent division. So for example, like A over B, that fraction bar means to divide, okay? Um, so like four divided by two, we can write it with a division symbol or we can write it like this, four divided by two. The fraction bar means to divide, okay? So these are different ways that we can represent multiplication and division. It's important that we know the symbols. All right, so when we multiply, if the numbers have the same sign, meaning they are both positive or they are both negative, the answer is positive. The answer is positive. I'm going to give you an analogy in a moment of like why this is the case. Okay. If the numbers have different signs, meaning one of them's negative and one of them's positive, then the answer is going to be a negative. Okay. So it doesn't matter what the numbers are. They could be like positive whole numbers. They could be positive fractions. They could be positive decimals. If the numbers are both positive or both negative, the answer is positive. If the answer is uh, I'm sorry, not the answers. If the numbers are one of them is negative and one of them is positive, then the answer is going to be negative. When we multiply and divide only, this only applies to multiplying and dividing. Okay. So what that means is when we multiply and we have two positives, our answer is going to be positive. I'm just going to use the plus sign. When we have a negative times a negative, the answer is going to be positive. Um, when we have a positive divided by a positive, the answer is going to be positive. When we have a negative divided by a negative, the answer is going to be positive. So you see same signs, same signs in both parts, the answer is positive. And all the other alternatives, if the signs are different, the answer is going to be negative. Okay. Now, some most people are cool with this positives when we multiply and divide because we're used to that. This is where people get tripped up. 
Why does a negative times a negative make a positive? Why does a negative divided by a negative make a positive? Let me give you a scenario, okay? And this is gonna kind of explain the bottom reasons as well. Let's say you go see a movie, okay? What's a movie that's come out recently as I'm making this video? Minions, The Rise of Gru has just recently come out. Another movie that's come out that you guys may have seen is Thor, Love and Thunder. That's a movie that's come out recently, okay? Um, so let's say you and a friend went and saw Minions, The Rise of Gru, and one of your friends loved it, but the other friend hated it. OK, if they were to have a conversation about the movie, one of them had a positive opinion and one of them had a negative opinion, then the outcome of their conversation is probably going to be negative. Right. It's going to be an argument. They're arguing. One of them's arguing why it was great. The other one was arguing why it sucked. OK, but if they both went to Minions, The Rise of Gru, and let's say your two friends really liked the movie, then they're going to have a positive outcome, right? Positive and positive is going to make a positive outcome, a positive, pleasant conversation. And the same thing if they both hated it. If both your friends hated it, they're also going to have a positive conversation. It's not going to be an argument, right? Because they both agree that the movie sucked. OK, so this is kind of the same thing that's happening with the numbers when the numbers are being multiplied uh, together or divided and they're both negative. The outcome is positive in a similar way that when you go to the movies, your opinions, if you have the same opinion, your outcome of conversation is going to be positive. If you have differing like one has person has a negative outcome of the movie, one person has a positive outcome of the movie the answer is going to be negative. So the actual part of multiplication and division does not change. We still multiply like how we've always multiplied, divided how we've always divided. All that changes now is we just have to determine if our answers are positive or negative. And since we know the rules and all the different scenarios, we can kind of figure that out pretty easily. So let's look at a couple of examples down here at the bottom. So if you did not get this graphic organizer, you can take a moment. You don't need to copy down this, um, but you can copy down the six practice problems. If you have the graphic organizer uh, or if you've already copied them down, let's go ahead and start working on them. So negative 16 divided by two. Well, 16 divided by two is eight. Our signs are different. So since they're different, our answer is going to be negative eight, okay? And we have 14 divided by two. Both of these are positive. So our answer is gonna be positive. 14 divided by two is seven. We have negative three times negative nine. Nine times three or three times nine is uh, 27. And since they are both negative, a negative times a negative, both have a negative opinion of the movie, if we think about that analogy, is going to be a positive outcome. So negative three times negative nine is positive 27. Go ahead and take a moment to try the other three on your own. Okay, and so let's go over the answers. 56 divided by negative eight should be negative seven. 54, I'm sorry, negative 54 divided by negative nine should be a positive six. And negative nine times eight should be a negative 72. So again, the actual math of multiplying and dividing doesn't change. What changes is if our answers are positive or negative based on the rules from above. Um, <clears throat> now that you have... I'm sorry, now that you have an understanding of these rules and you've done a couple of practice problems, let me show you the practice problems I would like for you to do um, in your notebook, okay? And the way that I would like for you to put this page in your notebook is kind of like how we did with our rational number organizer. Um, you're gonna fold this page in half. So I would just turn it to the side like this, fold it in half. And then I would tape again the top, the side, and the bottom. So that way, when you read it, you can just you know switch your notebook over to landscape and you can read the rules here, okay? Here are the practice problems for this set of notes. You have four practice problems today. Again, any questions, write them up at the top. Uh, question number one, negative four times negative three. Two is going to be negative one times negative one times negative one. Number three is 12 divided by four times negative two. So um, order of operation says that we can work from left to right. We're multiplying and dividing. So we can do the division first, just a heads up. And number four is this 
a little more complex problem. I threw in an addition sign here. You're going to do four times negative three plus 12 times negative one, and then divide that all by negative two. Remember, you can check your answers in the table of contents. If you have any questions, make sure to write them down to ask in class and have a stupendous rest of your day.